It's quiet today, a plain brownfield site undergoing soil remediation. But not so long ago, this site teemed with more than 1,200 people. Local residents, city planners, developers, designers, and experts of all type. They came together here with a common goal, to help shape the future of this spectacular riverfront property known as the East Fraser Lands. From transportation to recreation, to land use and architecture, every aspect of the site is discussed, debated, and finally incorporated into a series of professionally designed urban plans. This innovative and collaborative process, known as a design charrette, has proven to be the most efficient way to arrive at a consensus for a plan. Most amazingly, it all happens in just seven days. Located on the Fraser River in southeast Vancouver, the East Fraser Lands represents Vancouver's last true neighborhood-sized piece of land, an extraordinary opportunity to create a successful, sustainable residential and commercial community. Well, what's going on here is we've convened what is in the most classic sense a town meeting about the future of this place. You know, we call it a charrette, and that's a, that's a designer's, you know, architect's word. But for most people here, they were invited to come in the most basic democratic circumstance and talk about the future of their community. What makes it different than most town meetings, or just a town meeting, is that you add to that chemistry of the community uh, an amazing amount of architectural and urban design knowledge in the design team that's come here, merging with the local local expertise. Leading the charrette is Andreas Duani, widely acknowledged as one of North America's greatest urban designers. Duani is the founder of the School of New Urbanism. And new Urbanism is really um, can also be referred to as smart growth, but it's really getting back to um, shaping streets, parks, uh, and pub the public realm in a way that um, people benefit from. That we're so accustomed to choice, we're so accustomed to the freedom of choosing, that actually we have to be lured back into these cities. We have to actually create cities that are so marvelous in their diversity, in their interests, in all these things that you know very, very well, you know it very well, that in fact it doesn't make any sense to keep sprawling. You know, we have to create neighborhoods that actually look forward to growth and that actually demand that more people live among them because the more people there are, the better everything works. You know, the less congestion there is, the more sense the schools will make. They won't, they won't oscillate so wildly, you know, in the cohorts of kids coming or going. You know, the donuts will be fresher. I mean, let's get down to brass tacks. When there are more people around the donut store, they make donuts more often. Everything works better. The human habitat is, in fact, intrinsically, intrinsically works better when it is diverse, compact, and walkable. Andreas Giovanni's um, role in the charrette, uh, apart from being a, a visionary uh, in, his, uh, in his area of expertise, uh, is to really extract the best comments from all of the individuals that take part in the charrette and to be able to turn those ideas into drawings and then to move the process forward. Creativity is a very precious thing, you know, you, an idea is a very precious thing and you have to support it or it dies. You have to uh, bring it to life. If an idea is met with silence, just silence is enough to kill it. So you need to, you know, you need to sort of blow it up to life, you know, bring it to life and uh, we do that a lot and that's how we end up with so many ideas. And this is a result of not uh, that what you're doing is not good enough because in fact we are absolutely floored by, by what, we, what we've seen here, what has been achieved in the last 50 years. Uh, but because uh, we were actually challenged by Larry and by the department to actually take it to the next level. It was, it was right off the airplane. You know, it was, uh, you know, as we started ooing and aahing, he said, uh, let's take it to the next level. And the next level is not just architectural. That's, it's hardly better to do be It's hardly possible to do better urban architecture than you're getting downtown. It's very difficult. And it's very difficult to, uh, to get urbanism that's better than that. Uh, and so what does the next level involve? And what became glaringly obvious 
uh, overwhelmingly obvious is that this has to be a project that is actually uh, uh, deeply structurally environmental. In mid-April 2005, a large white 300-person tent is assembled on the East Fraserland site. This property, 126 acres, is probably the, one of the, the last great pieces of, of neighborhood development-sized properties in the city of Vancouver, and it will be for quite some time. What a fabulous opportunity. What, a, what an incredible responsibility. On day one, Andreas outlines the process and sets the ground rules for the discussion. I understand why they don't have an answer, but here's the spirit of the charrette. We hear the questions and then we get you the answers. But we cannot have the answers immediately. And what we need is absolute honesty and patience with each other uh, so that actually we can, uh, we can have the most transparent and open possible discussion of all sides. The EFL policy statement is presented, a key document that outlines the overall goals and objectives and principles for the site, from planning to build out. And I think it's worth stressing really that it was prepared in a very collaborative manner. It had a great deal of input from the local community and in, in particular from the East Fraserlands Residence Committee, which we very much welcome and we once again give our gratitude for their hard work in doing that. Um, and what it tries to do is balance all of the various different interests at play. Over the next three days, a number of leading experts guide participants through seven workshops covering transportation, the environment, parks and recreation, land use and architecture. And through it all, 12 designers spend long days creating, revising, and finalizing their individual plans in sync with the progress made at each workshop. To see the number of people working together, you know, working at different scales, drawings, renderings, plans, watercolors, different scales, regional plans, diagrams, you know, people putting things together for presentation. You know, it's a, it's a real team. It's actually, it's more like, it's not like a sports team. It's more like a, like a kitchen in a restaurant, you know, in which you have to put a lot of meals out and people really know what they're doing. Halfway through the charrette, the midpoint pinup session takes place. The midpoint pinup was a, a real highlight because it really began to um, show what the designers in the back of the room had been doing for the last number of days. And what they were doing was they were listening to what was happening in the, on the, the public process and the various topics, and they were designing in real time. And they weren't working on one plan, you know, they were working on perhaps nine different plans. Andreas was just very good at, in terms of uh, describing those plans. While there was nine different er, hands developing these drawings, he presented. And he presents because at least the basis is that you get one voice, one type of presentation. A bit more. By the way, look at this. You know what's interesting about this? This is the one that's most similar to the urban fabric up the hill to the north. Well, boy, have I seen lots and lots of interesting ideas and drawings done up. I'm still having a hard time sort of getting a grip on the mood of what the place might be like when it's done. I know it's very early for that still. Um, I see some things I really, really like. The, the one of the plans that shows the small island with the path winding through it is elegant. The work ramps up from day five to seven. Well, one of the interesting realities of this, because it's being so productive and every session is being productive, is that there are many good ideas. There are many, there are many, I, I looked at uh, back in the back where everyone's drawing, a while back, a few hours ago, I looked at a scheme and I thought, oh, that's a great scheme. And I went to the next scheme, oh, that's a great scheme. I went to the next one, oh, that's a great scheme. And I think that the first challenge is going to be to, to come to the conclusion which among those really is the most optimum scheme. On day seven, Andreas presents the completed plans. An interesting development has arisen. Instead of one plan rising above the others, five plans are still vying for first place. All the participants, including Andreas and his team, are stunned at this outcome, but thrilled to see a diverse range of ideas, visions, and concerns so well represented in the plans. Well, I thought it was a fabulous presentation. I don't think I, well, I've certainly per never been privileged to see anything like it myself, but uh, uh, I think that the amount of thinking that's gone on and, and, and where it's gone in the last two days since we saw them last is incredible. And uh, uh, they've listened, I think. 
and uh, they're putting into into the plans what we're talking about. Uh, maybe it's not all there yet. There's uh, still things being insisted upon that we're insisting no are not going to happen. But uh, uh, that's okay. You know, uh, some things have changed, and we expect in the you know while we work on these things for 18 months uh, to come that. Uh, you know, it's going to end up being the way that the community and the city and everybody else wants it to be. So, Having that creativity and the input early on in the process, it, it should make a difference. And it's, I think momentum is going to be the key. Um, now, in terms of the process, uh, this is like going to a university and having a degree in, in one night. Uh, in terms of the creativity uh, and the methodology involved. So that's very impressive and very unique. Many, many thoughts on the process. I mean, it's been a great process. It's a, a huge learning curve for all of us. Um, I, my feedback from the community is that they've really enjoyed it. It's really sort of elevated the debate above what the normal uh, nuts and bolts that we talk about. So that's been great. With the charrette complete, Park Lane and West Group can now move forward in the process with the city and the community, confident that the stakeholders' vision of a sustainable, integrated, mixed-use community Community is achievable. They will continue to work with Andreas, the Charette team, and local consultants who will ultimately create a single final plan. The new official development plan will be greatly informed by the vision and ideas of the surrounding community. And over the next 15 to 20 years, this riverfront property will slowly take on its newest identity, a remarkable neighborhood built by a remarkable community through a remarkable process. An urban masterpiece in a suburban setting.